Okay, welcome back. We're carrying on with chapter 7. Review questions. I'm going to do 15, 17, and 19. Okay. Alright, so how are the acceleration and inertia of an object 1? Okay, acceleration and inertia of object 1 related to acceleration and inertia of object 2 when the objects collide a elastically and b inelastically okay so again i just encourage you try it on your own the the more you try the the more you know what you know and what you don't know and then you can know what you need to focus on okay all right so let's see what the solution to that one is Okay, so for elastic, you've got this. A1 over A2 is minus M2 over M1. Okay, so for an elastic collision, the ratio of the accelerations is the inverse of the ratio of the inertias. Okay, and again, for inelastic, it is exactly the same in elastic okay exactly the same because uh, equation 7 6 if you go back and you check 7 6 holds for all interactions okay all right now 17 non dissipative interactions okay non dissipative remember meaning that we are primarily dealing with mechanical energy. Uh, this is energy that is reversible. We can, we can use that energy again. Whereas dissipative energy or interactions are interactions that are irreversible. The energy has gone into an incoherent state and we can't use it again. Okay, so 17. Explain why mechanical energy remains constant when non-dissipative interactions take place in a closed system okay so in my ADU TATS I always ask what is where's the signal and where's the noise what are the important things that you need to read here well first first for me closed system what does that mean that means no energy is transferred across the boundary to or from the system right no energy is transferred so the so the total energy needs to be needs to remain constant because it's a closed system okay then mechanical energy there's a lot of information in that what is mechanical energy remember mechanical energy we're dealing with kinetic energy and potential energy okay uh, gravitational potential energy okay uh, well, actually, any potential energy, not only gravitational potential energy, any any energy where we are storing energy and we can regain it again. So you can have the potential energy uh, gravity, meaning you lift it up and you increase the potential energy, or you can have a spring that you compress, you compress it, okay? So it's compressed, you're storing the potential energy. Wherever you've got kinetic energy and potential energy, you've got mechanical energy, okay and this type of energy is reversible okay and it's non-dissipative so explain why mechanical energy remains constant when non-dissipative interactions take place well non-dissipative interactions mean that we have reversible um, energy right reversible interactions and the only type are mechanical energy mechanical energy so let's see what they say non dissipative interactions cause only reversible changes remember dissipative irreversible changes so non dissipative only reversible uh, oh, I'm sorry but anyway you've learned something there even though I've, I've, I'm reading the wrong answer here but you've learned something okay good 17 for a closed system, 
energy must not change. So the changes in the four categories of energy, kinetic, potential, source, and thermal, must cancel. Both source energy okay, and thermal energy always involve dissipation. Always involve dissipation. Okay, so you've got kinetic energy, you've got potential energy, you've got uh, thermal, and you've got source. These two always involve dissipation. Okay? So if all the interactions are non-dissipative, only these two, only kinetic and potential energy changes are possible, and they must add to zero. Okay? Mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energies, and hence remain constant. So here's our mechanical energy. All right? Good stuff. 19. An object subject to only non-dissipative interactions moves from point A to point B and then back to A. A to B, back to A. How does the object's initial kinetic energy compare with its final kinetic energy? Okay, so what do you say there? Well, it has to be the same because we have non-dissipative interactions, reversible changes, right? So because of the reversibility of changes due to non-dissipative interactions, the initial and final kinetic energies must be equal at the common position, point A. All right? Cheers.